Now let us look at how the actual process works. Now I will be showing you two processes. This is process number one where we are speaking about a merchant transaction. Merchant to repeat the point is between the bank and the customer of the bank and at the bank I would have two types of customers a retail customer and a corporate customer. We have already said that a retail customer does not have a direct access to the treasury. So when a retail customer does these transactions, he has to do the transaction through the branch. I have two kinds of banks in my discussion. One bank, as you can see it here, is the market user bank. Here, let, let me expand that. I will have a market user bank. That's what you can see here. I have got a market user bank. Now what's a market user bank? In the market, in the banking circle, the banks not, not by regulation, only by practice are classified into two types. I would have a market maker bank and I would have a market user bank. So when I have a market maker bank, I am going to treat the market maker bank as the wholesaler. And there will be wholesalers maybe of let's say currencies. So I could be a bank which is a market maker and I hold stocks of let's say USD or a Euro or a, or a GBP. Give me a second. Okay. Or a GBP. So when I am holding these different stocks at that point in time. Oh, what happened? Suddenly something is going wrong. Give me a second. Okay. So I could be having the stocks of GBPs and now there is a customer like let's say Suzuki. Suzuki approaches the market user bank, asks the market user bank, what is your rate for example for the currency US dollar. In that situation when I receive this request at a market user bank, I will rush to the market maker bank. If I don't have the currency with me, I will rush to the market maker bank take a quotation from them. This is what we will see later on as a two way quote. Take a quotation from them and then give that quote to the market user and using this two way quote, the market user bank will quote the rate to the customer. This is the way we will have it. So we will talk about two markets. This is our merchant market and this one is our interbank market. So that is the way the markets are divided interbank on one side, merchant on the other side. Now coming back, I have a retail customer. Retail customer wants to do a transaction in foreign currency or buy, wants to do something. I don't entertain him at the treasury. I tell him that or rather he is told to go to the branch. The branch will communicate the requirement to the front office. I could have a large customer. My examples so far have been Reliance and uh, Suzuki. They could be big players like, like Indian Oil. They could be a big player like Facebook. There could be a big player like Google. They have got some requirement. Then such a corporate customer can communicate directly with the corporate desk in the front office of the bank. One way to communicate is of course make a call or use the internet. The other way, many banks provide them with a mobile based application today. Using such a mobile based application, they can communicate with the treasury. So now we have this requirement from our corporate customer that he would like to buy some currency or sell some currency or maybe he would like to buy some investments or sell some investments. I am the market user bank. If I cannot cater to his requirement immediately, in that situation, I need to touch base with the market maker bank. The front office dealer in the market user bank will then communicate either through a phone, through a dealing system or through a broker and find out who is the other bank which is willing to do a transaction with the market user bank. We then conclude the deal and exchange the deal ticket at this point in time, create the deal ticket at this point in time. Once the deal is concluded, both the front offices in market user bank and market maker bank will report that deal to the back office. Back offices will then exchange the confirmation messages and in this way the deal will be created. 
So we now have a scenario where I have created a merchant deal and the merchant deal gets executed between two banks or by using two banks, market maker and market user. It is also possible that if the bank has proprietary requirements, then this part of the bank branch customer may not be there. We'll do the deal only between two banks. We will then, which means we'll have two kinds of deals, customer deals, which I'm calling as my merchant business and my own deals, which is what I'm calling as interbank business. So I'll have interbank business, transactions done between two banks and the merchant business where the transaction is done for a customer. Great. So let me move forward. Now let's look at how the interbank deal is going to happen. So I'm on, I'm now at this spot. Front office of bank A is going to discuss a deal with front office of bank B. And we said there are three ways it can be done. They can use the telephone, pick up a telephone and call the other front office. They can use the chat systems or they can go through a broker. Now here I'm going through the chat system and we have an example of the Reuters chat system. In this example, now two brokers are chatting with each other using the Reuters chat. Then one broker is asking the other bro, one dealer is asking the other dealer that I would like to have half a million dollars against the Indian rupee. This is an old case, 25th of February 2005. So on that day, the Indian, one of the dealers is asking the other dealers, I want half a million dollars. What is uh, against the Indian rupee? What is your price? The other side then responds that my price is 66.25 and 75. So this is the response. This is what we call as the two-way code. In this two-way code then 6625 is the rate at which the dealer is willing to buy the currency and 6675 is the rate at which the dealer is willing to sell the currency. The concept here of two-way code is that when you deal with the other side, the buying bank or the bank which wants to do a deal will not expose what they want to do. So in a two-way code, both types of quotations would be provided. The rate at which buy transaction would happen and the rate at which a sale transaction would happen. So a buy transaction is at 66.25, 6625 and sell transaction is at 6675. So once this rate is acceptable, then the party who wants to sell, they are saying that I am willing to give half a million dollars at 43.6675 and I'm agreeing to buy USD at this rate. In simple terms, the party who is buying USD is willing to pay 43 rupees 66.75 paise per dollar to buy half a million dollars. And the date on which the party needs the delivery is 1st March 2005. And it also says that when you deliver the dollars which I'm buying, you are expected to deliver my dollars to my account in USD at Chase in New York. And this is my account number. And this is where the party buying has concluded. The party who has sold the dollars is saying that I'm confirming that I have sold so many dollars. I will deliver them to you on 1st March. And then I would like you to deliver the rupee against that dollar through CCIL at my account. So in this way, the deal gets created. So this first part is the creation of deal between two banks through the chat system. Once the deal is created in both the banks, the parties will create what is known as the deal ticket. Deal, creating the deal ticket is a mandatory activity. Now on the screen, you will be able to see in a little grayish color the deal ticket. And this will indicate the deal number first. Are you able to see the deal number at the top? Yes. Then yes. whether there is a broker involved or not, here it's a direct deal. That means there is no broker involved. The date of the deal and the time of the deal with which party the deal was done is also recorded there, which is the counterparty with whom you did the deal. What currency did you buy? What currency did you sell? This is a different deal which I'm showing to you. So they bought GBP, sterling pounds, and they sold dollars against that. The amount of GBP was 400,000 and against that 731,480 US dollars. This is the rate at which the transaction was done. 1 GBP equal to 1.82 and this is equivalent in the Indian rupee. Then the delivery mechanism, 
is it going to be cash tom spot or forward this is a spot transaction the date of delivery of that transaction the local currency equivalent if there is a broker involved we would write the name of the broker but since this is a direct deal there is no broker involved again if there is a broker involved the brokerage would be written here where do they expect the money to be delivered the correspondent details are given here then the dealer would sign it and then this would go to the this deal ticket would flow to the back office this is the chat for that particular deal which you say and here you can see deliver my gbp to midland bank and deliver my money at this particular bank through chips in new york so this is the way in which the deal gets created between two banks and based on that deal which is which is again what you see on the screen a deal ticket deal ticket is created are we clear up to this point that now both the parties have spoken with each other both the dealers have spoken with each other and the deal ticket has been created are we comfortable the dealer who has confirmed the deal so there will be some other front office guy who will create the deal ticket based on the deal that no. is confirmed i if, if i am the dealer if i am it. the dealer okay i will only create that deal ticket confirmation will be created by somebody else okay uh, okay okay fine. so i have the dealer himself will do the uh, yeah. so i'll explain ticket. that once again on the screen when i'm showing you the process flow now we have bank a where i have got the front mid and the back office and i have got in my bank the treasury application now treasury application is accessible to all three front mid back but as we said the front cannot access the back office part of that application the back office cannot access the front office part so anybody they will be able to access only respective part of their application there is a strict access control where one office cannot visit the other office i have my treasury application i have my accounting system could be uh, oracle's flex cube this is bank a i have got bank b on the other side same setup front office mid office back office they have their treasury application they got their accounting engine accounting system some maybe finical on the other side now i chat this is the deal this is step number 1 i pick up a phone speak with the other guy or i do the chat system i use a chat and speak with the other guy so i may follow any of these two mechanisms if i am doing a direct deal chat or speak once i chat or speak if i chat you would have seen that chat if i speak i would write it i write down on a blotter on a pad if i may say use that word on a paper pad what is the deal i have done and once i have com concluded the deal i will open my screen on my treasury application maybe acumen or something of that type and enter my deal ticket so the one who created the deal has also created the deal ticket now is your doubt clear that deal ticket is created by the same guy who created the deal yeah okay yeah. now once the deal is, is created in the system the same deal would flow to the back office the back office guy will now be able to see that deal on his screen and when he sees this deal on the screen he will need to create he will first need to check the accuracy of the deal if he checks the accuracy of the deal and he finds that the deal is correct all the details are mentioned there it is in right mechanic uh, right format right details are mentioned there then the back office will create using his screen a confirmation message so that confirmation message could be in swift mt300 form mt3 form so when it gets created in mt3 series form back office of bank a which has created the confirmation message on the basis of their deal ticket will send that confirmation message to back office of bank of bank b and the back office of bank b would have created would have received the deal ticket from their own front office based on that the back office officer creates a confirmation message sends it to the other banks counterparties back office now at each of the back offices what we have is a deal ticket received from our own front office and a confirmation message which has come from the counterparties back office so i have now at the back office as an officer two documents in front of me my own bank's deal ticket and the counterparty bank's confirmation message i will compare both of them ideally speaking they must match if they match i at the back office i am happy that the deal is perfectly matching then i enter the deal in my accounting system 
that this is the deal. The deal may be deliver currency today, tomorrow, deliver this security today, tomorrow. So for the way we had a deal for the currency, I could also have a deal so far as the investments are concerned. So we, we do this deal directly between two banks. One way to refer to, the, to, the, to refer to this particular deal. This is an over the counter deal directly between two parties. I am not speaking here about the exchange traded. We will see that exchange traded in a different way after some time. So we have this accounting done by both the banks, exchange confirmation exchange done by both the banks. Now assuming that this deal is about currencies to be paid to each other. So bank A has bought dollars and bank B has bought pounds. So there is an exchange of dollars and sterling pounds to be made between the banks. Both the banks will have their respective correspondence. Bank X is the correspondent of bank A. Bank Y is the correspondent of bank B. We will and then this will be for one currency. There will be another correspondent for the other currency. We are talking about two different correspondents. Bank A has got two correspondents X and J. Bank B, ha B has two correspondents Y and K. The back office is then on the value date or a little before that issue a swift message MT202 typically to their correspondent bank. Once the correspondent bank gets that MT202, the bank receiving this MT202, bank X in our example, will check the correctness of that message, check the balance available in the account of bank A with bank X. If all the validations are met and the balances are adequate, we debit that account and issue an MT900 message that your account has been debited. Once this MT900 comes back to the back office, we will only note that bank X has completed the transaction. Both the correspondents will then send MT9X to their respective respondent banks and based on that, they will execute the payment transactions. So bank X pays bank K, bank Y pays bank J. Once this is done, at the end of the day, both bank X and bank Y correspondents will send those mess end of the day 950 or 940 message type to the back offices of bank A and bank B using that back of using that incoming Nostro statement back office will carry out the Nostro reconciliation activity at both the banks they will do the Nostro reconciliation this is done on a day to day basis. So once this Nostro reconciliation is done my I'm com I'm completing the complete transaction loop. One more part which may be pending is both the back offices may need to do regulatory reporting. So depending on the regulation in that country they will submit reports to the regulator. This gives you the complete flow of how an interbank transaction done directly between two banks will work. There could be a broker but then the flow will still be the same because broker will be there only to introduce the parties. Once the parties are introduced to each other, broker simply collects his commission and moves out of the picture. The banks will then do the deal and do the entire process in a similar way at a later point in time.